Now, in order to avoid computation with complex number, we can express equation 20 in a different way. The reason is because if you take a look back in equation 20, let's see what happened. You see, if you look back in equation 20, this guy, C tilde n, is a complex number. This guy is a complex number. But you know, the complex number can be expressed as a real portion plus an imaginary portion. Okay? So, what we want to do is, we look at equation 20 again, but every complex number we will replace by using the real and the imaginary portion, just like we use the so-called rectangular Cartesian coordinate. So by doing that, instead of say C tilde n, you see, here we have C tilde n with the real portion plus I times C tilde n with the imaginary portion. So basically, the left-hand side of equation 20A basically is the same thing as C tilde n. The only thing different is C tilde n is a complex number. However, C tilde n r or C tilde n i, these both are real number. They are real number. So, for the same reason, instead of saying f is a function of k, where this f could be a complex value, then we can say that complex value f of k can be expressed in terms of the real part and the imaginary part. And keep in mind that this term and that term are the real number. The real number. Because we already put the i in here. Okay? So, so let's take a look at the previous slide again. So, all we did is we look at equation 20, we express C tilde n using the real and the imaginary part. We express this f in terms of real and imaginary part. And then after that, the remaining term, which is e raised to that power, we can express using Euler identity. So by doing that, all of those things, equation 20 will now become equation 20A. And as you can remember, this part is something to do with E raised to the power minus I times K 2 pi over capital N times small n. That is the same thing as this, based on Euler identity, based on Euler identity. As a matter of fact, you can see uh, 2 pi over n, this term right here, is the same thing as omega naught. Why? What's the reason? Well, re remember omega zero, what is the formula? That is equal to 2 pi over capital T. Capital T is the period, right? So in this case, after you discretize it, that is equal to n. So that guy is omega 0. And also, the definition of theta. The theta is given, the definition is here. And that is based on this thing. 
k 2 pi this thing from here to there that is theta okay that is theta so the previous equation 20 the previous equation 20 after you express c tilde n in terms of the real imaginary part after you express uh, f sub k in terms of real imaginary part and after you express e raised to that power minus i k 2 pi small n over capital N in terms of cosine and sine using Euler identity then what you got is equation 20a where of course the definition of theta is given as the last equation in here so On the left hand side, you can see of equation 20b, the left hand side is exactly the same thing as the left hand side of the previous equation, which is equation 20a, exactly the same. Now, the only thing you have to be careful is this. On the right hand side of equation 20a, you can multiply f real with cosine term and then you multiply f real with minus i psi term and then you multiply the i times f i with this cosine term and then you multiply i f i with the second term in here so you should get four terms together when you expand it and after you expand it you have four terms what you get is what I show you in equation 20b, you get four terms like I told you. This is one term, this is a second term, this is a third term, and this is a fourth term. You see? So now, what does that mean? So equation 20b, you already obtained that. And when you compare, let's see what happened now. When you compare, you can see clearly this is i, small i small i in equation 20b this is also small i okay so what does that mean that mean the c tilde ni the one i show you in the green color there that is exactly corresponding to this guy right there and that again is shown in equation 20d right here equation 20d and then if you compare a little bit more you will see there's another term which is the c tilde n real c tilde n real if you look at equation 20b, you will have a term called C tilde n real, the red one I just showed you over there. That is exactly corresponding to this term right there on the other side. And that is shown in equation 20c. So to make the story short, if you want to compute the so-called Fourier transform in the discretized way all you have to do is refer to equation 20c in order to calculate the real component of c tilde n and then you refer to equation 20d to compute the imaginary portion of the c tilde n and Keep in mind that because the i, small i, you already put in here, so this number, c tilde n real, and that number right there, c tilde n i, they are both real number. They are both real number. So in other words, you can see clearly, if you make use of equation 20c and equation 20d, you can calculate the unknown c tilde and these two equations have nothing to do with complex number in there. Every number in here is a real number. So that is the other way to do the job.
because many times you want to write a computer program and you don't want to deal with the complex number, this is the way to do it. And that is the end of this lecture. Here is the acknowledgement.